I hope that you are well. Welcome back or welcome to Elderflower Stitches. My name is Susie and I am from East Sussex in England and this is my little podcast all about knitting, sometimes sewing and other crafts and all the lovely yarns and things that I sell in my shop. Um, you can find me in various different places and I'll include all of the links in the description box below as well as a link to my blog on my website where you can find um, my show notes and links to all of the patterns, yarns, bags and anything else that I mention in my podcast. So in this episode I'll be showing some finished objects, some works in progress, some um, acquisitions and also some updates about my shop. I probably will finish off with a bit of a ramble and what else do you need to know? Before we start, I need to show you what I'm wearing today because very excitingly, I'm wearing a hand knit jumper. This was, this jumper was featured in my last podcast. You can go back and find more information about it if you would like. This is the Susie jumper by Along Avacana. It's knit in a strand of fingering with a strand of mohair and I used loom wool white peach with a strand of plain mohair and then I did that just for the top part and then I switched to a hand dyed yarn from one of my own hand dyed yarns. It wasn't one that I was dyeing up for the shop at the time. Um, I hadn't started my shop at this point. So the closest colorway that I have in the shop is probably pastel pride peach um, and then just plain mohair. And I'm a bit in love with this jumper. My mood has been so good all day today because I've been wearing this hand knit jumper and just feeling really cozy and lovely. It's kind of chilly today. We've had like loads of nice sunshine all week. And then today is really grey. I don't know if you can hear the wind actually, I might need to shut the window. Um, but yeah, it's really grey and chilly. But at least I get to wear my jumper. I'm also really pleased because I didn't think to check whether I can wear mohair or not. So I just took a gamble, but luckily it's okay. I'm going to shut the window because it's windy. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so I love the jumper. I love the fit is lovely. I love the length of the sleeves. I love the cuff. I like things to be long enough that I can like pull them down over my hands and be all snuggly. But I can also kind of pull them up without having to push my sleeves up. But I don't like to do that. Um, I'm happy with the length. The only thing I'm not keen on is the hem. I didn't follow... The instructions properly for the hem the hem was meant to be longer but I don't think it's that that I don't like it's the way I bound it off it's not stretchy enough and so it's not very flattering but it's not the end of the world it's fine so yes I'm oh, sorry I am really pleased to finally be wearing my first hand knit jumper and um, feeling like a proper knitting podcaster wearing my hand knit jumper, so very exciting. Right, I have two finished objects to share with you and literally about a million whips, so <laughs> let's get started, shall we? I'm going to start with my jumper because as soon as I cast off this one, I got really excited and decided that I was ready to knit my second jumper. Um, I used another along Avacana pattern because they're so beautifully written, they're really easy to follow. And this is kind of the Matilda jumper. The Matilda jumper is very similar to the Susie jumper, it's still a scoop neckline, still um, top down, raglan increases, there's a lot of similarities. However, this is knit just fingering weight, whereas the Susie jumper is written for fingering weight with motor hair. Um, the difference is I just could not get my head around doing the dot stitch whilst doing all the raglan increases, so I didn't. I just knit completely plain. Once I finished doing the raglan increases and I put the sleeve stitches 
onto spare cables, I decided I would start doing the dot stitch. But I didn't want to just start it, so I kind of faded it in. And you can just see there, I started with just a few and then I got closer and closer together. And then I tried it on when I had got just past the bust, so probably about here. And I thought, oh, it's quite nice as a crop. And I decided that I would finish it there, um, but knit a nice lace hem. So that it would be really pretty to wear over the top of kind of lightweight, loose, white tops and blouses. And then also over just kind of little vests and things. So I used um, a shale lace pattern, which is just like a traditional lace pattern. Um, that you can find instructions to online but the way that it's knit because it's decreases and increases gives it this beautiful wavy edge and that was exactly what I wanted so I knit um, the shale lace at first with so it's only one row of lace work and then knitting and then lace work and then knitting and the original pattern, just a free one online, suggested three rows of um, knitting in between your lace, which is how it is at the very start. But then I decided to make it a bit closer together, which is okay, but I think I probably should have just stuck with it. But I think it looks really pretty how it is, so I'm not not regretting anything but it's pretty i think i probably could have done with a slightly looser bind off as well because it does pull it a little bit but yeah i'm really pleased with that and i also did a little bit of shale lace on the sleeve hem too you see that i think this side is easier um i probably could have blocked it slightly more I don't know, aggressively to get the shape on the sleeve hem a bit better. And I, I'd only done two rows of the shale lace pattern on the sleeve hem because I thought it might be too much otherwise. But actually, I probably could have just done the same as I'd done on the hem of the top. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that. It's knit in got my hair in my mouth it's knit in one of my hand dyed yarns it's called after the rain and it's on super sock yeah really happy with that can't wait for a bit more warm weather so i can wear that again i don't like to have my shoulders out i just am a bit sort of self-conscious about my shoulders and like the very top of my arms so i quite like to have something to cover them up but not feel like i'm wearing a big heavy jumper or cardigan okay next up da, 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 da. a pair of socks these are my soul sister socks and this is a beautiful pattern that i've talked about quite a few times before because it has got my favorite heel in it i use this heel on everything that i knit so this is a whirlwind toe i didn't do the toe from the pattern I can't remember what the pattern what the toe is from the pattern but I just did a whirlwind toe because I know how to do them and I find them easy and then the beautiful lace lace work up through the front of the foot go day heel and I did the Amy's high instep adjustment so you get a slightly deeper gusset for um if you have a high instep like I do and then I finished off with this adorable Pico hem which is from the Suska socks by Andrea Mowry of Dre Renee Knits and I am so pleased with how this turned out it was actually really not hard to do at all and I think looks much more delicate than um regular ribbing I just like it. I'm not not a huge fan of ribbing. I think it's a bit of a utilitarian 
stitch for me. I probably would never knit something entirely out of ribbing because it's just not my favourite thing. But I know that you have to do it on like hems and cuffs because otherwise like it, it does yeah you, you need some kind of cuff on things but I'm probably going to do this on most of the socks that I knit from now on because it's so cute and so easy they look really sweet on as well I think if you knit your socks longer I don't know you want the cuff to like hold them up but I literally went so they just go past my ankle so they don't really fall down yeah love that right shall we start on my five thousand million six hundred and twenty one whips <laughs> <coughs> right okay whip number one now this whip is a special one because it's part of a giveaway that i am doing with cheryl from little church knits and it is this beautiful stole. It's called the Gardenia Stole. I'll just show you the front of that. Gardenia Stole, which is a lacy rectangular wrap. And it's beautiful. So it's got a lot of lace work in to start with. But then it will just go into... Um, then it will just go into, what's it called, uh, stocking stitch. So here is where I've got to so far. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, so it's, it's knit from the outside in basically. So you knit your lace section, you knit your stocking stitch and then you do the same again and you knit the two together basically. So I'm on my first of the two sections. I've done the second repeat of the lace, so if you look carefully, you can see that there's um, one lace pattern and then you repeat it, so you get the same panel twice, I guess. Um, and then I've got one more bit of lace to finish off. So I have knit this bit and this bit, which is where you do the same again there, and I've got this bit to go. Once I've finished that bit, I'm going to close the giveaway and draw a winner so you've got until i finish my lace to enter the giveaway <laughs> so um if you want to enter the giveaway pop back to my last podcast and watch the bit about the giveaway on there it's pretty simple to enter um, you just need to comment on the podcast which yarn you would make your stole from if you choose an elderflower stitches yarn and you win, I will also give you the yarn and you will get a copy of Cheryl's lovely pattern. So, yeah, thank you again, Cheryl, because she gave me a copy to try out for free as well as the copy for the podcast. So thank you, Cheryl. I'm loving knitting that up and I have learnt so many new stitches. It's been a real, um, what's the word? It's been a, like a pattern that's helping me to really grow as a knitter because I feel like I'm picking up so much from doing it. Okay, next one we have got uh -huh, Tea at Bertram's Socks. This is a lovely pattern by Ambrose Smith. She did a collection of Miss Marple themed socks and um, I like the Tea at Bertram's one so I'm giving those a go. Right, and here are my socks. So these are, I'm knitting them two at a time as you can see. They're a beautiful lacy sock. If I put my hand in there, you might be able to see it better. I've got this beautiful sort of like moss stitch panel down the front with lovely lace work. So pretty. I'm knitting these in, oh I forgot to tell you, I'll come back to that. I'm knitting these in Icy Breath which is one of my colourways on Super Sock. I think I only have one skein left um, and it's not colourway that I 
I'm going to be dying again for a while because it's sort of a wintry one rather than a summer one. So, yeah, icy breath. I'm knitting them on my new needles. These are Chowgu lace, red lace ones, and they're 80 centimetres because I like to knit two at a time. I forgot to mention these were knit two at a time as well. Um, I love it, loving these needles because they're just so smooth when you slide the um, slide the stitches along. And I'm also, while I'm knitting them two at a time, I'm not, I didn't cake up two separate balls of yarn. I'm just doing it out of the one and I'm pulling one from the centre and one from the outside, which has been relatively stress-free. Relatively. <laughs> not 100%, but you know. Relatively, no more stressful than having two balls of yarn on the go. I forgot to show you my gardenia stole. I am knitting in point shoes, which is one of my favourite, favourite colourways. And it's just on super sock. Uh, next up, I feel like I'm whizzing through these, but I have got so many whips. I kind of need to, I've got to be here all day. Um, the Birds of a Feather Shawl by Dre Renee Knits. So... I'm like way late to the party here. There's loads of people have already knit theirs, but I'm doing one now. This is, sorry about the needles on the table there. This is where I've got to so far. I'm not going to lie. It looks a bit like a pair of pants. Uh, <laughs> it looked even worse when they were shorter, but it's they, it was shorter. It's a beautiful pattern, so it's a, like a, what shape is it? Like, it's, like a, it's a quadrilateral. <laughs> um, so you've got this beautiful stitch running down the centre, almost creating like a little spine. And you've got fingering weight on its own, and then mohair on its own. But I'm not using mohair, I'm using... Sorry, I've got hay fever, I'm all stuffy. Um, one of my new bases, which is called Taffeta. Bit of focus. And uh, it's the Suri Alpaca and Mulberry Silk. It's brushed singles, lace weight. So it's basically, you can use it instead of mohair. It's gorgeous, slightly fluffier than mohair. And it's not shiny, like mohair has a kind of shininess to it that this one doesn't have. It's a bit more matte, I guess would be the word. So you can see, doesn't show up a huge amount actually in this light. It's very dark today, sorry guys. But um, yeah, you've got your sections of fingering and the sections of mohair. You can do it in a bit more of a contrast, but I like subtle things, so I like that you can't really see the difference. I think that over a bigger section, it'll be more noticeable. It is so soft and fluffy to work with. Sorry. Shh. Uh, yeah, so I've got one more. I've got the mohair to go, and then it's a lace section. Um, yeah really enjoying knitting that up this is a new colorway as well as a new base so this is called vintage lace and it's like a really creamy soft ivory color with matching oh that's even worse with matching fluffy taffeta i'm calling this base taffeta which you can find both of those in the shop now Next up, we have got more lovely, fluffy knitting. And I am knitting, oh my goodness, I don't know if you follow this lady on Instagram. I do, and I'm just in awe of all of her beautiful knits. So I don't know how to pronounce this, the Eos sweater, Eos sweater, um, by Refined Knitwear. And it's got these adorable little puff sleeves and it's more of a boat neck uh, than a scoop neck. I'm just going to see if there's another picture on the front. No. 
only a picture from the back but it's just like across here rather than down so I am here is my knitting <clears throat> There you go. So you can just start to see the puff on the sleeves there. So cute. Obviously, I've got this on quite a small needle at the moment, so I can't stretch it out, but it's gorgeous. See how the sleeve like puffs up there? That's going to be so pretty. And this I am knitting in vintage silk, which is another new colourway to the shop on super sock and with some taffeta as well there we go that's better <sighs> held together making the squishiest loveliest jumper ever can't wait to wear this imagine how cozy it's going to be look all the puffy sleeves so cute um so yeah this is the front now you do a bit of short row work so that the front is slightly lower than the back so it's not a complete like slash neck sort of thing that is a boat neck um and i'm over halfway through the raglan increases so i've got a bit more increasing to go and then i will split for the sleeves lighting's really dodgy today because it's so cloudy yeah i'm like steaming away with this really enjoying knitting it because it's the yarn is so soft and it's a nice simple pattern really so loving that have oh, i got a new progress scheme these are going to come to the shop soon it's um amazonite which i just thought it's really cute that's just marking that's just reminding me that that's the front left and then i need to i want a new row basically a new round so there's that one uh one, two, three, four, one more whip. <laughs> and it's tiny. So I wanted to have a go at knitting socks on nine inch circulars. So I had a little poll on Instagram and I said, how do you do the toe? And everybody said, not on nine inch circulars, but you switch it to DPNs or circular needle so I did it on a circular needle and then I switched to nine inch circulars and I have to say I'm not a convert yet I can see that obviously you don't have to keep turning your stitches turning your work around pick up the stitches but I'm so slow like it's so small and fiddly maybe I'll get faster but I'm going to persevere for a bit longer but yeah really struggling with that they're going to be true scrappy socks i've done the toe in white peach what i had left over and then i've switched to one of the really pale yarns from the point shoes uh fade set that's just a vanilla sock that I am knitting. So I've done a whirlwind toe, 66 stitches and just knitting round and round and round. Treated myself to a few bits. I, um, I didn't buy any yarn last month actually. I didn't have any acquisitions in my last podcast other than like my own hand dyed yarns. But then I just saw these colours and I was like, Ooh, so pretty. I took a picture of these two on my bed on my quilt and my quilt is like this colour. So pinks and pale greens. So these are from Pixie Yarn. Lovely Sophie. We've got Urchin, which is like minty greens, pinks. Very cute, and it's my favourite base, seventy-five twenty-five, which is I think we use the same base. But I love it; it's a really nice high twist. And then this one, which is a pixie pot. So pixie pot, I think, is when Sophie does a yarn that's um, not going to come back to the shops. So it's one of a kind. It's lovely pink, 
with pretty speckles. Again, her 7525 sock base, which is really nice and smooth. Don't know what I'm going to knit with them. Probably socks. Probably just a pair of socks in each, I would have thought. Then, beautiful Tracy from Nora George. Uh, this is called Dandelion Breeze. Um, it's got like all the best colours, a sort of like lavender colour and then pink bits. Oh, look at that. Oh, so cute and just like absolutely beautiful. 75-25 again, so my favourite base. Dandelion Breeze, beautiful. So those are acquisitions, uh, new things in the shop. Let me get those as well. Oh, Ta okay. <laughs> so I've mentioned a few of these bits whilst I've been knitting. Some of my whips are using these. So we have got vintage lace on super sock and taffeta which is the mulberry silk and al uh, silvery alpaca yummy um what do i need to say about this so if you go on to vintage lace on my shop and then once you click on it you have a drop down you can choose which base you want it tied up on and there is a little option to get super sock and taffeta together with a special little Special little deal if you get the two skeins together. So that's vintage lace. And then we have vintage silk, which is what I'm knitting. Uh, what I'm knitting my Eaus sweater from. So that's super sock and taffeta again. Again, you get a special little deal if you get the two together. Then we have got pirouettes. Um, so pirouettes is like a long-standing colourway, but um, just thought I'd show you it again because now you can get it on taffeta, and it's just like the perfect, cool baby pink. I haven't got a skein of point shoes because uh, I, I think they, I think it went. So here is. Point shoes. So point shoes is like a really pale blush pink and you can get it on super sock and taffeta. I also do the colourways on opulence as well but I haven't got them all dyed up to show you at the moment. So new colourways, new bases. Look at that. Oh. Okay my my camera battery just died when I was doing a little um, showing you some of the yarns, but I think I finished showing the yarns. So I'm just going to show a couple of other bits that are in the shop and then I will talk about Advent news. So um, I added some little progress keepers to the shop recently. I bought some beautiful um, mixed glass beads. I turn them into little progress keepers. So I have lots of different colours. Um, let me show you a few examples. You can buy the colours individually or there is also an option to have five colours as like a little rainbow. So here are some of the other ones. And they're just all different assorted glass beads that are on progress keepers and they come on these little rose gold um, hexagons which you can use as like a jumbo stitch marker so that would work for like chunky needles um, and they come on one of my little cards like that and if you have a look at the 
Etsy listing, you'll be able to see how they come packaged. They come all packaged up in a nice little box and everything as well. Let me show you something that is brand new that I haven't actually put in the shop yet, but will be. I think you saw it on my Yous, Yous jumper. <laughs> I don't know, I need to learn how to say that. So I have got some gorgeous little rose quartz um, progress keepers. which are just coming into the shop. And I also have some Amazonite Progress Keepers too, which are just so cute. My two favorite colors at the moment are pale pink and pale green. So I just couldn't resist having these little cuties in the shop. So Glass Bee Progress Keepers, and some semi-precious stone progress keepers are in the shop. Now, finally, let's talk advent calendars. Last year, I did a an advent calendar, which was just progress keepers, because at that point, I hadn't been selling yarns. I was just doing progress keeper sets and bags. So I did a... a let me show you the bag. Oh. I did a bag like this, one of my little round base bags with a sweet little star keyring on, and 12 progress keeper sets. And then I did a Christmas cast on box, so a box that had um, a bag, progress keeper set, and a mystery yarn. But this year, after lots of people asking, I am going to do a yarn there advent calendar. There is an option to add a full skein for Christmas Day and also an option to add a bag. And there is also the choice between paying the full amount in one go or paying um, in instalments. So you pay May, June, July and August. Anything else I need to tell you about that? So in the advent calendar, it'd be 24, 20 crab minis. And um, the theme is my kind of Christmas. So there will be no novelty, no bright red, bright green, Christmassy colours. It will be pastels, neutrals, really delicate, soft, subtle colours. It will be a fade. So it will work from day one to day 24 will be a fade and um yeah it's just going to be all my usual kind of delicate soft colors there will be nothing garish or bright or anything like so that so if you like my color palette if you like the colors of yarn that you've seen me knitting with that i've shown for my finished objects and my whips then you will like this advent calendar because it will be those kind of colours in uh, semi-solids, tonals, um, variegated yarns. Yeah, just it won't be Christmassy. The colourways will be inspired by things that I do at Christmas, but my kind of Christmas is still pastels. <laughs> There's no like bright colours. Um, yeah, even my Christmas tree is like all champagne gold baubles and there's there's yeah no big bright stuff so if you're wanting an advent calendar that's all gentle pastel colors nothing too lively then this is probably the one for you i'm basically making my dream advent calendar and making it available to other people <laughs> I was going to do a rambly chatty bit at the end of this video. However, as you can hear, <laughs> my hay fever is so bad. It's making me really stuffed up and I just can't actually, it's making me sound like I have a cold <laughs> and I just can't bear it. So I don't want to listen to my voice anymore. I'll just have to do another rambly catch-up video at another point because I just don't want to listen to my awful nasal voice anymore <laughs> I'm really sorry uh so I hope that you enjoyed seeing 
my my finished Susie jumper, me actually wearing it, a couple of finished objects, some loads of whips, some acquisitions, pretties, and uh, all together, yeah, nice. And, uh, and some shop news and things that are in the shop. So don't forget to pop over to my last podcast, enter the giveaway if you'd like to win the Gardenia Stole pattern, maybe some elderflower stitches yarn. And also don't forget to pop over to my Etsy shop to pick up an advent calendar if you would like one um, or some nice stitch markers or yarn, whatever you're after. Um, but yeah, I hope to see you very soon. Bye.